Hello, my name is Lyle Troxell. I'm developer advocate for Wakanda. I'm showing you the Wakanda 4 server administration web interface. As you can see, it's quite an improvement over our last version. Currently, I've opened server demo solution, and that's the same as the server code waltz <laughs> project up on GitHub. This is the URL for that. As I go through these samples and examples of the coding that I'm doing, every time I do a new story, um, I branch on GitHub on Git, excuse me, and I push that to GitHub and I keep those branches around. So if you want to follow along with what I'm doing, the codes on this speed up generation, you'll see the samples there. And in a future screencast, I'm going to be doing a progress bar on generating a million records. Because recently, while I was working on this project, the last screencast, keep in mind, chickens, as a data, the data model of that has chicken and every chicken has a breed and every chicken lives in a coop. In any case, someone asked me, hey, how do you generate a million records? And I looked through the code and realized, oh, we should do this asynchronously from the server doing it and having the client kind of take a look. And uh, there's a ways to do that. So I started looking at that. What I realized is I had some speed issues. So to test what my speed issues were, just to get my code honed a little bit, make sure it ran really smoothly, I went ahead and started looking at how I could speed it up. And this branch, um, I generated just a, a race and gen. This is like kind of my testing suite right here. And they uh, add HTTP request handler basically creates an event listener for an event handler for um, this URL path. So when you hit erase and gen for the for the in the project, you'll actually run this method inside this file. I'll get to that in a minute. I was using that before with data in it. Okay. Um, down in the generate some data, which is my same method as before, though I have enhanced it to deal with a progress reference, which is for a progress indicator, which is for progress bars, and I'll get to that in the next screencast. One of the things I realized is that my generation script actually did, and for every coop, I randomly generated a certain number of hens. It looks like I was up to 20 hens, one to 20 hens. And so for this test, I wanted always, I wanted to run it to see if I could get the same speeds. So I set the number of ten, hens to 10, though I do call this random because that takes some time as well. And then down here in the rooster section, it used to be that I randomly picked a one in 10 chance, it looks like, of getting a, a rooster for every coop because you don't always want roosters, especially when you have young children they get violent. Uh, that's experience speaking. In any case, I always said it. So for this test, I always generate 10 hens and I always generate one rooster. And then the rest of this git is that new file. But let's go ahead and look at that over with uh, TextMate because it's a little easier to read. Here's that script. Um, try run gen. When you do this, this uh, HTTP request handler, uh, this guy, when you call this function, you actually get two objects. You get the request object and the response object, and that's how you communicate with the server. And that's all documented, of course. So, for example, response content type is a header and text plain, so this is going to be a plain text document. First thing I do is I go ahead and I nullify the coops and chickens. I just erase all of them. I remove them, and then I set the sequence number so that we start our sequence number at one. Then I start a timer here, the initial timer, and then I go ahead and set some messaging and I generate 3,000 coops. This right here is the progress indicator. I'll get to the next screencast. This, you'll notice that generate coops is now actually a method on top of my uh, class, my coop class. And you can actually find that um, my data class is inside coop. In here, I've got add method generate coops. And this is useful. The, the reason I did this really has to do with um, when you're generating coops, it seems like that's a method of, that's a class method of coop. Anyway, 3,000 of them. Let's move on. Here's that worker. I'll deal with the next screencast. And then I just spit back how much time it took, right, in, mil in seconds. So now we can run this thing and see what our performance looks like. Here is the erase and gen. Um, we'll run it again. It takes about six seconds to go. So we'll just let that go for a second or so. And 6.74 seconds. All right, so let's see if we can speed that up by improving the code. So the actual code, this generate coops, um, if I track it down, it's this file here, and it is generate some data. All right, so that's the method of coops class. This is actually what gets called. So let's head down here. One of the things I'm doing is I am creating an array of objects, and the objects I have are all the breed uh, the breed entities, and I do a to array, which basically makes an array. So this guy's going to be an array of objects, and the objects are just an ID, 
with the, inter the ID number, okay? So it's just a way for me to encapsulate these so that I can use them later, okay? So then down in my loops, here's my creating all my coops, and then when I create a coop, I save the coop, and then I create the number of hens. Remember, every time we're gonna produce 10 hens. And then I go ahead and get a current breed ID. So this breed ID array, again, is an object of, of, of of all the breeds, and I pick a random one, and then I call, I get the property of ID. So what goes in here is a number, a float, because we're in JavaScript, right? Now, I create a new hen, a new chicken, and I'm gonna attach the coop, there's the coop. Remember up here, I actually created the reference of the coop and I saved it so we can assign that, because it's entity, and this is a, a relation, an entity relation. Here's another entity relation, breed. And here, I have an ID over here, and I, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm doing a breed class method find where the ID equals that breed ID, which is a totally fine way to do it, except that every time I loop through this thing, remember I'm making 3,000 coops, I'm making 10 coops per, that's going to be called like 30,000 times, and that can add up. But luckily, the construct of this um, this guy right here, this class method of creating a new uh, entity, it takes this object, and our C interpreter that's actually running on top of JavaScript that actually generates this and actually manages the database, understands that if you pass a entity reference to uh, entity reference, it will assign that entity reference. If you pass it in number, it will assign that as the ID of the reference, right? So you can think of it as in a, in a traditional database structure, this number here is the row ID of the related entity. We're in relational data structure, it's a little different. Okay, let's also make that change down here. But you understand the concept, I hope. If not, please do ask. So now when we save this, we'll go back over to here. Before it was six seconds, six and a half seconds, 6.7 seconds. We're gonna run it again, see if it speeds up. Good, 4.8. So that's like a, what is that? Two second impro improvement almost, which is pretty awesome. And that was the one thing I want to show you on this screencast. Thank you for watching, and next one will be a bit about progress indicators, progress bars, and workers, and we'll figure out what the next one is. Thanks for watching.